Every time I get to this event, I still visualize myself being a kid and dreaming about fishing the classic. This tournament's between me and the lake. If I go out and get Grand Lake in the teeth, I win this tournament. Yes. I burn to win, and I hate to lose. Yeah. When you don't even have that opportunity, it, it's not any fun. It's first or nothing for me, and I understand that, that very rarely does anyone ever remember the guy that finished second. Your thoughts can definitely cost you the tournaments. It's cost me in the past. Dang it! I know for one, if I was to win, I mean, I probably won't even be able to talk. To hold that trophy up, I, don't, I can't even, words don't even describe it. it. It would be, I don't even know how to put that into words. Yes! Woo! There's 25 pounds swimming in every creek on this lake. It's that good a lake, so I just got to get five of them in the boat to have a chance to win. Your 2016 Geico Bassmaster Classic Champion! It's the 2016 Geico Bassmaster Classic, presented by GoPro. Well, that's the scene right there, Grand Lake of the Cherokees, and day two of this all-important world championship of fishing, the Bassmaster Classic, day two. And, you know, everybody knows you have to make it in the top 25 to get on to day three, but you know that the real thing is you've got to win the Bassmaster Classic. We just heard the anglers say that. Nobody remembers who was in second place. Welcome to the Toyota Bassmaster Studios. Tommy Sanders here with Mark Zona, and that just puts even more emphasis on how good a position Jason Christie is in. Right exactly now. right. If you rewind time, the last two classics locally dominated. Randy Hall, Lake Gunnersville, Casey Ashley, Lake Hartwell last year. Right now, this day two, stay within range of Jason Christie. Absolutely. We know statistically if you're down in 11th or 12th place, you don't have much of a prayer actually of winning it, and winning is everything. For our Yamaha Unlock the Lake now, let's go up in the air with Robbie Floyd. Where do you fish on the Grand Lake of the Cherokee? That's the big question, the $300,000 question. This place is huge, over 40,000 acres of water, 1,300 miles of shoreline, and more boat docks you could flip in a lifetime. But after torrential rains, just after Christmas, this place was flooded. It really turned the lake around. The north end, which is usually not the clear portion of the lake, is now the clearest of all the waters. Elk River, above that sailboat bridge, if you need clear water, that's where you're gonna wanna fish. The middle third of this lake, that's where it was really busy back in 2013. It's stained, it's dirty, but there's a ton of boat docks, a lot of pockets these guys are gonna be running deep in because we've had consistent 60 degree days this week. They think those fish might be moving into those pockets getting ready for the spawn time. But down on the bottom third of this lake, down towards the dam, the water is much dirtier. And I'm comparing it to last year when you can see 15 feet deep, now you're seeing one foot or less. But almost every angler told me before this tournament started, if you can find a way to catch them in that dirty water, you're probably going to have a lot of it to yourself down on that bottom end. The question is how you're going to catch them in that dirty, cold water. Do you go north where it's clear? Do you go to the bottom where it's dirty? Or somewhere in between? That's the $300,000 question. Exactly right, Robbie Floyd. And really, here's the whole dynamic. This lake is flipped around from the last time we were here. Cold, cold, muddy water down by the dam. Midlake, biggest player in 2013. Well, it's better, but it's still dirty. The clearest, warmest water all the way up the Elk River. But that area receiving a lot of attention. Well, that's the scene right there at Takeoff, Grand Lake of the Cherokees, Grove, Oklahoma, is where the takeoff takes place. Look at these giant crowds here. Grand Lake is right in the middle. It's just like Alabama when we have a classic here. It's right in the middle of bass fishing culture. And people turn out. They get it. They understand the sport. They've got their heroes, and they are turning out big time. Obviously, on day two, as we start this very, very important day of fishing, a lot of adrenaline. Maybe a little bit of the nerves are calmed down. Maybe more of a game plan. Here on day number two, you're certainly going to need one. And there's the man right there, Jason Christie, who proved he had the right plan on day number one knocking out 20 plus pounds of fish at the weigh-in in Tulsa at the BOK Center. He figured them out. Five fish for Jason Christie. 20 pounds, 14 ounces. There he is, your Geico Daily Leader. Christie crushes them on day number one at the Geico Bassmaster Classic presented by GoPro. One more time for your Geico Daily Leader, Jason Christie. You can't win it on the first day. I know it sounds cliche, but you can dang sure lose it. And and, uh, and I'm all in. Uh, I'm all in on the baits that I'm using, and I'm all in on, on the pattern. I expect the fishing to be somewhat tough. You know, on paper yesterday, it looks like I had a great day. And uh, 
it was really a struggle. It's a grind, you know. I, I didn't have a lot of bites, and luckily the bites I got were good ones. And I eliminated some water, so I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try to start with where I ended yesterday on on that pattern and and run it. And the conditions are gonna be a lot like ye uh, yesterday. You know, go from there. I may end up five miles up the river. I may go to the dam. I mean, it just I never know where I'm gonna end at the end of the day. That right there is the benefit of having years of experience here on Grand Lake. And very strange to hear your leader, leader say, "I I had a miserable tough day." but at least the quality was there for Jason Christie. You know, the water temperature seems to have uh, kind of held steady overnight. Maybe that afternoon bite will kick off a little bit earlier this afternoon than it did yesterday. You know, I just need to get a couple early and hopefully, you know, a nice one. I thought the weights would be a lot higher and they could be today. This time of year, you just have to, you have to check everything every day, you know. I'd, didn't have a bite yesterday early, like in the back of nothing, but later that's where it happened. But this time of year, I mean, it can change overnight, so you can't, kind of got to experiment a little bit in the morning. You can't get in a hurry. I mean, that's, that's the whole thing. You gotta, even though it's nice outside and water temperature starting to come up, you still be patient. I thought the weights would be a lot higher and they could be today. Well, as Pep talked this morning, the same as yesterday, just got to keep slowing down and slowing down. Exactly right. And if you notice, there's a big difference, though, today. Yesterday, he put two fish in the live well in the first 30 minutes were over four pounds. Not the case, but Christy said, any bite helps me mentally in this tournament. In practice, I caught a big one over there on that side of this pocket. And I caught a big one yesterday morning, you know, over there, a five-pounder. Well, I threw by this pipe, and I hit one, and it, and it came off, and it made a big bull. And I was like, well, good, he came off, you know. I know where he's at. Well, yesterday, when I made that same cast, there's a little bush there or something. It wasn't a fish. It was because uh, I did the exact same thing yesterday morning. It was a good place for there to be one. But it wasn't a bass. And if you're to go off what Jason Christie put on the scales on day number one, his first two hours, obviously very critical. Christie, a big favorite here in 2013, could only manage seventh place. He's ahead of that schedule now. Let's go over to Bill Lowen. Things get tough. He's certainly a guy you look to. And Bill Lowen is definitely one of those guys who puts his all into it. And the prospects of winning a Bassmaster Classic are something that, well, he's pretty emotional about. It, it would be... Um... I don't even know how to put that into words. Um, I mean, so many people are responsible for me being here. Um, my buddy's parents, my family. Um, it would be it would be amazing. I mean, there's no no other way to describe it. Do I want to win this event? Absolutely. I think I want it more for everybody else than I do for myself. Um, I guess that's just kind of the way I am. Who would be fishing today? Uh, stay on there, girlfriend. Come on, Bill needs you. Ah! Woo! God dang! You have to hold that jig on a rock and just shake it really slow and then boop! Six, probably. Ah, love it. Hey, now, that's kind of what we expected yeah. to see mm. here on Grand Lake yeah, and Cherokees. And you're looking at, a, at an angler way down just under 
17 pounds on day one and was mad. He said, I had one of the best practices of my career. Well, Bill Lowen took him a long time this morning to get to this one right here, but boy, that's the kind he is looking for today. Bill Lowen right up there moving up our leaderboard significantly unofficially right behind Jason Christie, right behind Craig Benson. Drops down a slot, as do our two former classic champs, Alton Jones and Randy Howell, but it's still early on, day number two, the Grand Lake of the Cherokees. More classic on the way. The 2016 Geico Bassmaster Classic presented by GoPro is brought to you by Nitro, Toyota, GoPro, and by Triton Boats. Geico Bassmaster Classic presented by GoPro. This is the 46th edition of the World Championship of Bass Fishing. We're coming to you from the Grand Lake of the Cherokees in our host city, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Big day today, moving day. you got to be in the top 25 to make it to day number three, and the crowds are huge here at the takeoffs, the weigh-ins, and, yes, even on the water. We'll see more about that later as we head out to Randy Howell. Exactly. Probably the most stable area right now on Grand Lake. Clear water. Very warm water up in here, 50 to 55 degrees. And this is a grinders tournament right now. This is not a heavyweight event. Sets up perfectly for Randy Howell. Stick out right in front of me right here. That's a big key spot. Get ready. Confidence is the biggest uh, and the most fragile uh, element in our sport and I've said that a lot and I've learned that more and more really over the last five or six years and, and, and that's why momentum is so big because momentum is confidence and confidence is momentum and and uh, and right now I've got I've had you know pretty good confidence and pretty good momentum the last couple of years in these classics and uh, you know after winning one you know how special and how big it is for your career and that's why you know I think I want to win more now than I did the first time there he is Little. It's a little fish doing up there. It's a big fish place. That's a bite, though. It's a bite early. I don't think he's 14 inches, but let's see. Probably darn, he is 14 inches. How about that? <laughs> Almost threw him back. <laughs> I'll take it. Be the first one to get rid of. So we'll call him number one. He was right there, man. I tell you that one, that one stick up right there. You see that one stick up? That is unreal. That one stick up. How many fish? I caught like four off that stick up yesterday over a rotation of coming back and forth to it. And I lost a big one on it. Never saw him, but he was trucking to the side when I caught him. Well, that spinnerbait worked. Randy Howell on the Elk River. Randy Howell, who came from so far off the pace the final day in 2014. The Geico Bassmaster Classic for that dramatic, dramatic win. Let's go now to the 2008 Bassmaster Classic champion from Lake Hartwell. Alton Jones, and this is a Texan, that says, you know, go ahead, back your Oklahoma favorites. I'm coming in from Texas, and I am serious. He laid down some pretty substantial evidence to back up his claim. Alton Jones is going to be, well, trying to get there at the end of this world championship. You want to make sure that you're in contention after day one, because for, for at least half the field, maybe a little bit more than that, the dream of being the Bassmaster Classic champion died on the water. And at least for me, it's alive for another day. I've got a chance, and I'm going to go out there, and I'm going to live the dream again tomorrow. Two things on Elton Jones right here, Tommy Sanders. Fishing painfully slow, but he's fishing for good ones. He said, I'm just hoping really a whole lot more fish move up in my area because I burned them on day number one. He's not getting a lot of bites, but just like Jason Christie, quality has been there so far. There's one. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. Finally. Okay. Come here, baby. Open up. Open up. Whew. 
Mm. That's a nice one. That's that fish is really, really close to four pounds right there. I'm gonna go ahead and put him on the big side. He was just on. See that little log? Actually, he wasn't on that one. Look at the one right up on the bank up there. He was on that. You want to see the kind of stuff I'm targeting. These fish are super shallow. They're way past transition. The ones I'm catching are. And there's good ones, females. Never even felt the bite, just tightened up and just swimming off. That feels good, at least we're, at least we're started. You know, I've seen enough to know that there's at least still a few fish on these stretches. Like I said, when you get in here, even, even if it's, you just gotta fish slow. You gotta, you gotta have the confidence and patience to fish slow. If I start rushing too much, I won't catch these fish. Now I'm not, I'm not saying I'm not gonna switch water, because I'm pretty sure we are gonna switch water again in a few minutes. But when we do, I need to fish patiently. Well, like you said, Mark Zona, his concern was that he had maybe worn out the resident fish on day number one. That, that fish right there gave him some good feedback, but not as quick out of the gate as he was on day number one. And now over to Greg Vinson, had a great classic in 2012, the specialist from the Alabama River. Exactly right. And Greg Vinson, one of our only anglers concentrating down by the dam. And he had a fantastic day number one. But here's what's scary about Greg Vinson. He caught all of his bass from noon on. And he said he's committed to this area because he has nowhere else to fish. He said, look, I'm doing one thing. I'm cranking rock near the dam. And it is, here, here's the best part. The ugliest, coldest, most awful looking water. But he said, I got a prayer. I'm a competitor, you know, and, and, uh, and I have a family. You know, I have a little boy and uh, he wants me to win. He said I was gonna win. So uh, I, hope, I hope he's right. <laughs> but uh, I fish for me, I fish for my family. I fish for my friends and my fans, the people that have believed me in me uh, from the beginning. And uh, I don't take lightly, lightly the opportunity that I've had to fish full time. I never dreamed that I would even get to fish uh, professional bass tournaments. And I've been doing this full time for several years now and fish multiple classics. And uh, so it's just really cool to look back and see where I started. And uh, hopefully I'm not finished. There he is. Bass, maybe a drum. Bass. Here we go. Come on, baby. Come on. Yeah, baby. Yeah. That took way too long. <laughs> we'll do it four more times. We'll be sitting pretty, though. Woo! That took way too long. <laughs> but that's the kind I've been catching. They're worth the wait. Boy, they'll make you sweat, but it's that time of day. It's uh, it's almost 10 o'clock. This water's warming up. That's a good quality fish. I just got to keep winding and grinding. 
Shit, finally. And if you talk to any local on Grand Lake of the Cherokees, they'll tell you the numbers are not the best down near the dam, but the quality lives there. And Tommy Sanders, that number two things about that bass that Greg Vinson caught right there. Number one, that was the longest fish landing I think we've had forever. So, Didn't want to lose it. And not only that, that fish looked absolutely frigid with attempts down in the low fort. I got a little chill. Just I felt like the fish for a moment there myself. Well, Greg Vinson moving back up the leader. Had really fallen off. You talked about how long it took him to catch his first good keeper of the day. He's going to have to light it up a few more times if he wants to stay in this thing. Meanwhile, what? how about a little trivia? Feed I me. give you and everybody this question. How many anglers fished in the first Bassmaster Classic back in 1971? 24, 25, 26, or 50? Tax your memory. See if you can figure it out. We'll have the answer for you when we come back. You're watching the 2016 Geico Bassmaster Classic presented by GoPro. You're watching the 2016 Geico Bassmaster Classic presented by GoPro. No question about it, this is the big one. You win this one, your life is changed. It is the World Championship here on the Grand Lake of the Cherokees, and it's the 46th edition. How many fished it the first time around? Way back there in 1971, was it 24, 25, 26, or as many as 50? Some of you old enough to remember that exact number. Everyone else can look it up. Either way, that's your answer right there, 24. And there they are, all 24 of them. Whom Ray Scott, the bass boss, loaded them all on an airplane, didn't tell them where they were going until they got up in the air. And then he let so so classic preparation not as big a deal back in the day. Tommy, you know when we covered that event together, I could have sworn. I'm sorry. That. I yeah, really I thought have, it was I might have been there. You weren't even born then, so we got to take that <laughs> off the table. But uh, Lake Mead, that was their location right there. And boy, big takeoff to start that one off. And three days of fishing later, it was Bobby Murray, your very first classic champ, '71. Let's go to our 2014 Toyota Bassmaster Angler of the Year, Greg Hackney. And really, the first day of competition, Hackney lived with a small hand carved homemade crankbait. Usually after you catch a solid stringer, well, you're kind of getting dialed in. That is not the case. Hackney still trying to figure them out. You know, typically when you get something going on day one, you know, it will help you throughout the event, but this is one of them where I didn't really necessarily, I didn't really learn anything. It was kind of what I had already found in practice. There just never was really any big change in the way the fish acted. The water temperature warmed up, but they're they're still the same. Greg Hackney, as we mentioned, won the title, the points title back in 2014. This is the one he's got to have. Greg Hackney, Todd Faircloth, Edwin Evers, by far the, the three best anglers to not win a Bassmaster Classic. And Hackney will tell you, when it's my time, I will win the Bassmaster Classic. I've kind of just let go. That might be a keeper. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. It'd be close if it is. Oh, yeah, it's a keeper. Not a big one, but <laughs> it's a stock. Greg Hackney, we're going to go from him right now and take a look at the man who is actually the defending. Geico Bassmaster Classic Champion Casey Ashley asked him as he came in this week, you're ready to not be the champ anymore, to not have all those duties on your neck. He said, wait a minute, who says I'm not going to win it this time around? Good point. Exactly right. Just like Hackney, Casey Ashley not having a solid practice. But if you notice, a lot of the guys that were vocal about having a bad practice, somehow still in this event. Yesterday was just another practice day for me. I didn't really catch much in practice. Just went looking again like I knew hadn't even been here before. And got on a little something and, you know, I think it's even going to be better this morning. I think I'm going to be able to catch them a little different way. Uh, maybe be, any be, be even better than yesterday. The water's clearing up. It's warming up fast. The fish are moving, so it could get ugly. One. Ain't no giant, but it's a start. Let's see, it's about the first bite I had yesterday. Now, 
Casey Ashley with just under 15 and a half pounds on day number one, putting himself in a good position. But he and all these guys in the back of their minds have this man to think about today, the local favorite, Jason Christie, who's got a little more in the way of distractions to deal with than anyone else in the field. I just don't think they're biting yet. I mean, uh, they're not biting. I just haven't got in front of a big one yet. Dude, I, I've seen, I mean, this pond is, this pond is crazy like that. I mean, you can, you can go and I'll just bam, bam, two six pounders. These fish want to move up. I mean, that right now they're starving for sunshine. Anytime we get these sunny days, they're going to move up there and they're going to sun. And, and what that usually means is they're not going to bite. They get, they just don't bite as often and it, it makes fishing tougher. But what's going to happen is we're going to get tonight, tomorrow, and then Sunday's going to be the day that they're going to eat. Man, I want one of them beggings just to throw slack in that line. I don't think that was a bite. I think I hit a limb or something. The lake didn't show out yesterday. I mean, I, I expect actually the weights probably to go up today a little bit. I don't need to worry about that till after the third day. Just got to go one fish at a time. Stay on the pattern. Because it ain't easy. I mean, we've seen that yesterday. Got to grind away. Right. I mean, I have a lot of confidence. I just feel like if I just hunker down, you know, and keep whining my swimmer, I think that, uh, you know, I can come across and I get around an area that, you know, I didn't find any con concentrations of fish in practice. It was just under these conditions, you know, jerk baiting or something like that in clear water, you can find some concentrations, but they just, they'll pull up and then they'll ease back off. You got to be there when they pull up. How y'all doing? I mean, I, I feel like I need to be fishing around something, you know? I mean, they're definitely on what I'm fishing, but they're on, there's high percentage cast. There's just not a lot of it around anywhere. Jason Christie hanging on to that lead right now. Interesting what he and Casey Ashley and so many of these guys said the, the practice day, the last practice day, was not near as good as the first day of fishing. They used that for their first day of fishing. Let's take it out to uh, Randy Howell. And Randy Howell, and let me ask you if I've got this right. He's using watercolor sort of as structure, right? It, well, he, here's really what's going on in the Elk River and why it's getting so much attention. It's It's... The heavy rains that we had back in December, that muddy water is still in this system, except for the clean water coming in from the elk. Randy Howell says where the clean water collides with the dirty water, basically that's what he is concentrating on. Can y'all just hold back out there good? Real shallow right there. Come on, leave fun. That fish knocked the crap out of him. He's still on there, I think. Oh my gosh. Lord, let him be on there. I felt him. I felt it. I felt it move still. He could be on there. He is on there. That's a big one too, I think. No, it ain't a big one. Whoo, thank you, Lord. On the trailer hook too, look. Trailer hook paid off. Oh, gosh. Thank you, Lord. Oh, that's why you use big line, big 16-pound gamma. Keep them on there. Oh, that's a nice one. That's a little better. Man, I thought he got off. Whew. He was right there, boy. Them fish are still up here. They're moving in. It's about a two pound and 10 ounce, probably. Yeah. Yeah, that just made me, that just paid off for every time I hang up because I got a trailer hook on. That right there is why you got a trailer hook on. Thank the Lord he didn't come off under there. You ever get a fish on like that? Just keep pressure on them and hold them till you get a different angle and sometimes they'll come right out when you change the angle. 
You're seeing Grand Lake is definitely a new lake right now. A week ago in practice, guys were not catching a lot of fish, but they were giants, four to six pound bass. There's a whole new wave of fish coming in right now. Just as back in 2013, the second day of the Classic, dead calm, flat water, something for these guys to deal with. And a lot of radiation means the, the temperatures are going up. So does that mean guys are going to start moving? Some of them have indicated that, yes, that could be part of the game plan today. Plan B, plan C. Everything's on the table as things get a little bit tougher on Grand Lake. Day two, the World Championship, the Geico Bassmaster Classic. But a lot of fishing yet to come here on this day. You're watching the 2016 Geico Bassmaster Classic presented by GoPro. 2016 Geico Bassmaster Classic, a big part of the week there. Early on was the Night of Champions. All our classic qualifiers were there to honor, well, above all, Aaron Martins and his 2015 Bassmaster Classic Toyota Bassmaster Angler of the Year title. But a great night, a fun night for everyone. Something you look forward to each and every year as we get ready to get back out on the water here. It's day two, moving day at the World Championship on Grand Lake of the Cherokees and Jason Christie back in the lead at about the same margin he had to start the day. Something that we definitely saw on day one. A lot of your guys we thought were going to catch him. But one of those on day two, Matt Heron. Slow, painful grind early this morning. It's just a timing thing, my buddy. You pull up here and they're doing their deal and they'll bite. Well, the biggest thing that changed is the surface temps steadily going up. We started this thing off last week on Friday uh, in practice with most of the lake being in the in the mid to upper 40s at, at best and now we've got water temperatures that's climbing up to 56, 57 in certain areas so everything's really kind of changing and it uh, you know it, it's, it's gonna be a grind. It's gonna be a, a daily uh, struggle to figure out where they're going and what they're gonna do next. I'm waiting on the sun to warm it up. That's all the deal is, man. Boy, this is not how I want to start my morning. Hey, buddy. There's one. That's good, I think. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. Listen to Matt Heron right there. So many anglers a week ago when this water was a lot colder, when we had a lot more wind. Here's some new the note the nugget, Tommy <laughs> Sanders. They were crushing them on that little laser lure flat-sided crankbait. And as it's warmed up, it seems like that crankbait bite has gone away. Oh, there we wait, go. Wait. Now, now, Tommy. That's 3-4. Right that there. is how you treat a dog on Grand Lake. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Going from Matt Heron over to Bill Lowen. One fish we saw is good fish that came after a, a long labor this morning and still, still grinding it out. Stay on there. I don't think it's going to keep... Felt good for a minute. I don't know if it's going through or not. Yes, it will. It's another keeper spot. <laughs> I guess you take them however you can get them, you know? <laughs> oh, shoot. Did I ever tell you I love spotted bass? <laughs> Took Bill Lowen a long time yeah. to, to get off zero today with a really good fish, but then started getting slow, still slow for Bill Lowen. Let's go over to Todd Faircloth, also in the Elk River, like Randy Howe, but a different approach, obviously. Living in the Elk River and fishing channel swings, wherever that deeper water cuts against the bank. And the reason why, he said, look, man, this is exactly where I fished back in 2013. I know it well using two baits, striking Lucky Shad crankbait in between the docks. As you see, he calls those bonus fish, and then he'll bunker in with a Strike King Bitsy Bug, a very, very small jig. 
practice. The other thing that he's doing, he's fishing mm. out a little bit deeper than the rest of the anglers in there. Fishing kind of mm. that six to ten feet of water he feels a lot of anglers are ignoring. From there, going to head back to Elton Jones, who's kind of doing the same thing. He's really lived with a jig so far in this tournament. But the main key for Elton Jones fishing slow and he's fishing the warmest water he can find he said the first area that warms up that is where he is soaking his jig this is the one time a year a big bass wants to get out of the wind get her back in the sun you know usually they're looking for shade and but you know they're heavy with child right now i mean they're way far along with those eggs you know think about your wife when she's nine months pregnant that's where that's where these bass are they're just wanting the sun these little places I'm fishing on these flat sides are, are warming up fast. I think there's still be a few pulling up. Got three hours. I need to catch a fish an hour, and one of those hours I need to catch two of them. That's a good one. There's a big one. That's a big one. Oh, stay on there, baby. <clears throat> Not as big as I thought it was, but that fish, look how fat it is. I just saw how fat that thick that thing was. That fish will weigh four pounds. It's about 16 inches long and it'll weigh four pounds. And it's going straight to the big side. Mm. Mm. Now I need a fish an hour. So what I need is a fish an hour. And my heart's racing. What a fat chunk. You know, anything else, you call somebody a fat chunk and they're gonna punch you. In fishing, that is a term of endearment. That bass is a fat chunk. You know, it's usually only grass lakes where you see fish that are built like that. Grand Lake is as close, it's such a good lake. For, for a lake without grass, Grand is probably the best one I've ever fished. Tommy, real quick, rewind, did he? Did he say these pre-spawn fish are with child? He did say that. He did. <laughs> Alton's, he's, he's like a, he's a rider. He's a riderly guy. He's very descriptive. Big job. Figures out new ways to say things. Big race going on. And Alton Jones, who started so fast on day number one, going a little slower for him today. Like he said, he needs a fish an hour. Most of these guys that we're watching today need a good, solid fish an hour. More to come. You're watching the 2016 Geico Bassmaster Classic presented by GoPro. You're watching the 2016 Geico Bassmaster Classic presented by GoPro. Day two of the Bassmaster Classic Grand Lake of the Cherokees. Big crowds on the water today. One of the first really nice weekends of the year. Everyone chasing Jason Christie, everyone in pursuit of the man who led it after day number one, including Edwin Evers, got to be a little bit on a mission from not catching a limit on day Exactly one. right, only catching four bass on day number one and going, check this out, 15 miles past his nearest competitor up the Neosho River. He is up there all alone, as he would say, in a desperation act to just get a bite. Well, he's steadily getting bit, not giant ones, but keeping him in the mix. Definitely a bold move from there. Going to head over to Randy Howell, who's starting to look for that afternoon bite that we saw on day number one. I'll catch more right here today, I guarantee you. This tree and about like about two or three more that are sitting out here offshore. I got to take my time and ease along there and not get on top of them because you can't see them till you get to them. Anyway. I'll try not to holler loud because there's other guys up there. We don't want nobody hearing us. <laughs> no, y'all excited, but let's do that golf clap. <laughs> yes, pound and a half, a little bigger. Gives me, uh, gives me more, more hope there. Just like four, I got out here on the tree that was just a little deeper, had two foot of water on it. And that's where, that's where the fish was at. It kind of short, short bit it, and close to the boat too. 
Randy Howell catching him as steady, probably steadier than most of the other guys we're watching today. Just hasn't had anything of any size show up for him as we move over to Greg Hackney. Hackney fishing up in the pockets in the Neosho River, not very far up the river. Really, Hackney thought this tournament was going to come down to adjustments every single day. And he said, really, I I'm drawn shallow with the warm temperatures. I want to be up shallow. Got a big one right there. Come off and practice, and I ain't been bit back in here since. It's funny. Every every day I catch one in a different place, you know. I mean, it's, it's like you just have to keep going around and around. I experimented yesterday a good bit. I will again today. It's just this is like this ain't you know I'm cranking, but it's like finesse cranking. It's not. I can't pick up and roll, you know. I don't have to fish so freaking slow with this bait. The big one I caught yesterday was like hooking a rock. I, just, I set the hook on it, you know, because it, it felt like it was a bite. It took him about two cranks before he ever started moving. Fine with the kicking. You know, just, he was not aggressive at all. And just like I saw yesterday, you fish down a stretch at the wrong time, you won't catch one. I mean, just because you fish down a stretch and don't catch one doesn't make it a bad place. It just makes it a wrong time deal. There he is, the big one. No, it ain't. No, it's not a big one, but it's a. Felt good there for a second. <laughs> Come here. I'll take him. I'll take. I'll take my poles will reach. He just bit good, you know, like a. I thought he was gonna be a better one. Well, it's great to listen to Greg Hackney right there talking about just hoping a few new fish move up every single day, living with that crankbait. And like Hackney, Jason Christie has lived with one weapon all week so far. The thing about me that's probably different than the other guys is they probably had four or five or six rods on their deck and they're alternating. I have one bait. I'm throwing a spinnerbait in. And uh, I've caught every fish in the tournament. I haven't had a bite actually on any other bait. And, it just limits my choices. I just don't have confidence in any other bait under these, you know, the water conditions. They're not biting it, they're just mouthing it. You know, you're feeling that thump, 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 and all of a sudden that, that blade just quits turning. The thing about this lake is it's so big. These pockets and these creeks are so long and it all looks good. You can get caught up by just fish, I mean just taking off and you can waste a lot of time idling in and you know you just have to stay on the pattern. I mean you gotta run in, fish what you want to fish and get out. You can't get caught up going all the way, all the way around the pocket or you're gonna waste uh, valuable time. Jason Christie, the local favorite, and you're looking right there at what comes with that. Big crowds following him around, and you see the choice he has to make when he goes in there. One side of that area now is going to be pretty much messed up because of the sheer volume of boats that are coming in right behind him there as we head to our Skeeter Taste the Bait. Exactly right, Tommy Sanders. And Christie, here's what he's concentrating on in these pockets. What they are is what he calls a small gravel feeding shelf. Just an outcropping that comes off the bank. It's almost like it's an underwater point that you can't see. And he's throwing that spinnerbait shallow up in about one foot of water. But it's where it rolls off on that pea gravel. And generally, where it rolls off in three to four foot of water, that's where the bites come from. Back to our defending Geico Bassmaster Classic champion from Lake Hartwell last year. Casey Ashley had a good day yesterday, firmly in the top ten. Brought in, well, 15 pounds, 5 ounces. That's pretty respectable. Spent all of his day today, however, trying to make it back to that position. And we saw him earlier catch a good fish, and it was on up into the morning. But he said, you know, this was the schedule I was on yesterday. But if you look at the guys that are jig fishing, you look at Faircloth, Alton Jones, and Casey Ashley, this weather sets up perfect. No wind, high skies, and they're able to fish right. Come on, now. There's supposed to be one there. Crazy, Mark. All these fish out here suspended in the middle over bait. But if you're going to get one to bite, he's got to be in five feet or less. That's a good one there. Yeah. 
take five of them all day long. Solid three and a half. Starting to come alive. Most bites I've had on a jig. Now I can get used to this. Well, that was awesome. Did you see his line slicing to the right when that fish bit? Oh. Casey Ashley, not too much in the way of bites today, but this is a day when everybody's having fewer than usual bites, and you really got to concentrate on not missing any fish. We take a look at our leaderboard, Jason Christie and Todd Faircloth putting some good pressure on him, but Casey Ashley, we just saw there, wrapping up, at least for now, his first year as champ. All year last year, after winning the Classic, you know, it's a, it's a mind-boggling, life-changing, I mean, you have to get used to so much stuff that you're not used to after winning the Classic. You know, I hadn't even really thought about, hey, I could do it back to back. You know, when I got here, got pre-practice on Grand Lake, it kind of clicked in my mind, hey, I got to get with it. I got a chance to do something that I'm the only guy that can do it. The 2016 Geico Bassmaster Classic presented by GoPro is brought to you by Berkeley, Hook, and by Yamaha. 46th Geico Bassmaster Classic presented by GoPro, Tulsa, Oklahoma. That is our host city, all the events, all the surrounding things happening here during this week in the BOK Center. You see that metallic building there in the background. That's where the weigh-ins are all week long. Something good going on each and every day, including our Night of Champions, where we got together to especially to salute our Toyota Bassmaster Angler of the Year from 2015, Aaron Martins. But this classic rocks. I love this tournament. It's the best tournament of the year, and I never want to miss one again. I missed the one I can only one. That was a terrible. I had to work the show, which is horrible. And watch Ike and Elliot win. Never give up. Ike, you're awesome. Never give up. Ski, I love you too. And Justin, all you guys. I don't want to thank too many because I won't thank somebody that'll get mad at me. But that's it. I love you guys. Hope to do this next year. And uh, good luck to all of you in the tournament. Be safe. God bless. He's so great. Aaron Martins, the honoree at the Night of Champions earlier in this week for his incredible 2015 season, which, Mark Zona, I don't know if that'll ever be topped or even tied, even by Aaron Martin. I don't think anybody can top his speeches, no, to be honest. The best ever. Absolutely the greatest. So far today, here's what we've seen. Jason Christie started with that substantial lead. He's still got it. It's not as substantial as when it began because things, it's just so futile to try to figure out what happens in a week when changes are coming so rapidly out here. It's a very confusing event right now and the reason I say that th this is Grand Lake if you have never been to Grand Lake and you're watching this footage you're like wow this is this is one of the toughest events we've ever seen look they maul them this time of year on this lake it's just the mixture of conditions for some reason has this lake off and is throwing a curveball to the rest of the field but with that being said if you look at the history of this lake in March in March there is a 20 to 30 pound bag somewhere every single day. Each one of these angles will tell you, I've never seen so many bait fish in my life. The average size of the fish by all measurements has gone up more than a pound since we were here just in 2013. And I really think the biggest fear was this guy blowing it away early this morning to where we're crowning him halfway through the event. Not the case so far, Come on. but if you look at the other anglers right now, they're catching good ones, but not putting the numbers together. And really there's a few reasons why. If you look at what the nights are right now, and the daytime temperatures. It's getting really cold at night, and then it kind of eases into that 70 degrees. The water is not warming up fast enough Ooh. where you're seeing oh, fish catches, to, to but that. not consistency. Yeah, and these guys are, of course, everybody doing something a little bit different, but these guys, when you hear them say, hey, at 11 o'clock, it's gonna lie, at one o'clock, I don't know whether to believe these guys when they say, I don't know if they know or not. For the majority of the field, right now, you look at it, they're squatters. They are some of the best grinders in dirty, shallow water that at least are surviving and hanging with Jason Christie. And, and, we, and we look at everything that they're doing out there today, and do you, you see them kind of getting lit up and maybe starting to move? If things don't get, if nobody starts to get on a roll, is everybody going to start moving a lot? Look, before this tournament began, 
People told you, if you caught 13 to 15 pounds, you're out of it. That is not the case so far. 13 to 15 pounds, that's a survival Ooh. mode right now just to hang in the game. But it's guys that are making critical calls today. Guys like Edwin Evers outrunning the competition, going way up the river and hanging in the game right now. I'll tell you what, we have seen it all today. Things going very, very slow, but also we know that things can happen very, very quickly here on Grand Lake. Someone's life is going to change after tomorrow is done. Are you stoked? Yep. <laughs> You're watching the 2016 Geico Bassmaster Classic presented by GoPro. Look at our host city. That's the BOK Arena there. Fabulous building there. Great place to have our weigh-ins, and they're coming up at the end of the day today. And this is a great place right in the middle of a big chunk of bass fishing culture in the United States. So much bass fishing history centered around Oklahoma and Tulsa in particular. So, of course, they're going to be local favorites, and they're going to have a strong following because they're just simply a lot of fans in this area. This, the phenomenon of the local favorite, Mark Zona, for almost four decades wasn't even a part of classic culture. I mean, we didn't have anybody even win in their home state until Boyd Duckett cracked that open in 2007. Exactly right. From there, Randy Howell winning on Lake Gunnersville. And for some reason, when we went to the Wintertime Classic from Randy Howell on to Casey Ashley, here's the deal. Really, when it was a summertime classic, it's almost like it was more of an even playing field. But obviously, with the Wintertime Classic, it definitely favors your local competition. Casey Ashley was really the first guy people, you know, took a look at and seriously said, hey, a local favorite could very well win the Classic, and that's exactly what he did last year on Lake Harbor. It's honestly a phenomenon, though. It's really a phenomenon. I that. mean, and will it continue this year? We got our Oklahoma favorites. Casey Ashley trying to make it not continue this year. He wants to jump up and win this thing coming from South Carolina. And this is really so weird. If you kind of look at how this tournament is playing out, it's a very hard tournament to cover right now because last time we were here, it was basically a jig deal in the morning, and the guys went through jerk baits in the afternoon down in the clear water by the dam. That is not the case this time around. Cranking, jig fishing, you look at other guys throwing spinner baits, it is all over the map. He's gonna make the team. They just need a little sun on their back, I reckon. Tommy, you know you call that bass right there? What? It's what called, do you call a, it? called a good old-fashioned line burner. A line burner? Okay. That's what All the right. kids call it. Okay. Well, line burner. Work it into my vocabulary. I like that. Casey actually likes it as well. Gets him back into the top ten. He had fallen out earlier. Alton Jones, slow start to the day compared to day number one, but obviously he's sticking with what he's doing. He really likes his game plan, and he likes the areas that he's working in. Confidence allows you to really slow down and pick through an area. You know, if you don't believe a fish is sitting there, you're not gonna fish that, that exact spot as hard as, as you might otherwise. And I'm looking for very specific things when, I, when I'm in an area fishing. So when I spot those parts, I'm, I'm picking it apart. It just feels right right now. It feels like I'm gonna get a good bite here soon. Flipping the shallow edges of these boat docks and then the, any wood cover that's on the banks between the docks is really, that's where my confidence is right now. There's one just a keeper but he's a keeper mm. every little bit helps let me tell you for sure every little bit helps come here baby I think he's a keeper okay I'm pretty sure that's 14 inch I don't need to measure this one but oh yeah he's 15 something finally get to put a little water on the small side that's a yeah still that's a good two and a quarter pound chunk it makes me feel good about my decision to just not get in a rush and 
spend my time in here for the rest of the day. There you go, baby. I went ahead and swimming it back to the boat. I'm sure he was over there watching on the bottom when I started burning it in. I paused it one second. He went, I want to thank all of y'all. Y'all are being great. I appreciate you guys very much. You don't know how good it makes me feel when I, I, I kind of get fish and I forget you're there. But when I catch one, you remind me and it, that's, that's, it gives me chills. Now be quiet. Elton Jones using his uh, gallery as, as a motivating factor is it for a little bit of support there. That's a good idea, good way to play it there as we move from Alton down to Bill Lowen. Exactly, and Bill Lowen, it's been a slow grind for him. Really had high hopes coming into this second day. Does not have a limit yet, but has one giant fish in his live well. You know, I'm, I'm just kind of doing what I consider junk fishing. Um, running down the bank, I'm, I'm running a pattern looking for a certain type of area that I want to fish, um, you know, fishing the way I like to fish. The name spotted bass, but I'll take you. I love spotted bass. Long forky tail suckers. It's about time. Oops, sorry, man. I had one Wednesday in practice about seven pounds up there by that big boat come out from under a dock and roll on my bait and I was like, let get off. You know what I mean? Up to, when that one flashed on it, I was like, uh oh, here we go. Really, and you could tell this uh. time around from 2013, here's what's different. The last time we were here is the mid lake section. That was the major player for all of your leaders right now. It is all over the map. From guys like Greg Vincent down at the dam, you see Lowen in the Mid Lake area, from Randy Howell fishing all the way up the Elk. Randy Howell, of course, how did he get here? A great day on day number one. Over 17, nearly 17 and a half pounds, and this former classic champ is definitely staked out of territory, and he's got a game plan. He's been catching them pretty steady today, still, still kind of waiting for something big to show up up there in the Elk River. This time of the year, uh, especially uh, early March, you know, you usually have a lot of wind, and this in Oklahoma is notorious for big wind. And today is probably the first slick calm day there's been in a in a month, I bet. So the fish kind of get in shock, and they start just kind of floating, as I call it, up off the bottom. And then you see them on your Lawrence and the side image everywhere, just swimming around. You can't make them bite. So when you get in that wind, the wind pushes the bait, pushes everything toward the bank, and it gets those fish back down where they belong and makes them get active. And so you got to have a little bit of wind to catch them this time of year. There he is. There we go, baby. Just came across here. What did I say while I got that that wood that I run up on that you can't see that's under the water? The fish was sitting right on that wood. I remembered it came right back to it. That's what that Lawrence GPS is for. You see that thing? You keep up with where something under the water is and come back and hit it. Two and a half pounder. I'll take him for now. Mm, mm, that felt good. Man, I was just sitting here thinking that was a perfect looking spot. And that if it wasn't so calm out here, I'd probably catch one and then bam, he bit it anyway. He didn't care if it was calm. He just wanted to ride in this Triton. <laughs> I'm gonna ride back to Tulsa. He might not get to though, two and a half pounder. I hope I don't get to take him back. I hope I get to call him. Right now he's looking good, but. 245 today though, I hope he's still swimming out here in the lake. We can trade him in. 
That's good, good sign right there, boy. Real good. Hey, Tommy, three things, yeah? Triton, Lawrence, Livingston Pants. Right on. That's how you do it right there. Spot on. That is exactly how you do it. Randy Howell out there, his size getting a little bit better, getting closer to the, the type of limit he wants. He's still got a ways to go. In fact, he said he wants that one to swim a little bit later on. Looking for some bigger ones. All of these guys on day two of the Classic. Geico Bassmaster Classic. This is second day action tomorrow, of course, day three. The final day of the Classic, and we'll have full coverage for you tomorrow on ESPN2. And it starts at 10 a.m. Eastern time, including that final weigh-in. The final weigh-in at the Classic is always such a spectacle. It really turn out to be a nail-biter. Is that going to be the case tomorrow as we head back out on the water? Day two, Matt Heron, the Alabama angler. Bang. Oh, I'm fishing for all the guys that's, uh, I don't know, lives the dream of becoming a professional bass fisherman. You know, I've, I've fished at about every level you could fish. I came onto the sport at 38 years old. I'd done majority of my, my kid raising and all that kind of stuff. And uh, every time I get to grumbling and griping and what I don't like about this or thing I like about that, I think about going home and going back to work for a living. And uh, I think about the good old days I spent with my dad and uh, all the lessons that were taught and learned and all the quality time that we spent. It meant a lot. That's, that's, that's what drives me. What a day, what a day. It's crazy. A lot of times you can work a bait out off the bank and get a bite. These fish, they have been it's like you're getting a reaction bite because you pitch up there and if he's there, he's going to hit it when it hits the water. But to sit there and shake it and work it off the bank, nah, it ain't happening. It's right up here tell me whether I'm going to catch one or not. These two pieces of cover right here, <laughs> it's either going to be really good or really bad. There's not any fish in here. <laughs> I don't believe there are today. Boy, this is not good. Oh, the final deep water in the back of spawning pockets, fishing little channel swings, and it has not happened at all for Matt Heron today. Only has one keeper in the boat. Basically just picking a spinnerbait up for, well, desperation right now in Heron's boat. Nope. He's not a keeper. You gotta be 14 inches long. Such a strange lake right now. Fishing channel swings in the back of spawning pockets where deep water, it's the final deep water in these pockets. Guys like Heron, they were crushing them a week ago. Big numbers. And you're seeing Greg Vincent, who had a phenomenal first day, sitting on one bass right now. Greg Vinson, who had a great, great chance at grabbing the trophy when the Bassmaster Classic came to the Red River. Of course, Chris Lane was the guy who won that time. Greg, very disappointed about that. It takes me back to 2012 when I almost won the Classic. And uh, I was in, you know, second place and in the hunt the whole tournament. Boom. You know, I've been eager to get back in that position to have a shot to win. That's the kind of fish you want on the third day of the Classic, baby. So being that close and knowing what it feels like to be in a position to win the Classic and then after coming so close, 15 pounds, 14 what you missed basically uh, makes you hungry to get back. You know, if you're, if you're a competitor, uh, there's nothing like getting beat to get you motivated. First term of the term, uh, season last year, my goal was to make the Classic and uh, you can't win it if you're not in it. And so once I got in, uh, I've made up my mind to, to, to fish to win in this event, to not fish for second, um, to make decisions to try to keep myself around the tight fish that could put me in a position to win, and that's what I'm doing right now. Stay on there, please. 
good one? Yes, yeah, it's heavy. Or it's hooked funny. Oh, hooked in the jaw is a spotted bass. Little spot. <laughs> Greg Vincent and his second fish of the day. You know, these guys have had a choice. If you don't like fishing around people, you can go to a place where the water looks like that. Greg has not seen another angler in there all week long. Exactly right. Well, we're going to see a, a, a couple boats right now, Tommy Sanders. If I you want to so, yeah. lead the Bassmaster Classic after day one and be the, the biggest local favorite in the tournament, this is is what is going to look like right here. Yeah, a lot of people were planning on taking their boats out this weekend anyway. Add the classic in, and it makes for a pretty interesting dynamic, which Robbie Floyd breaks down for us now on our Geico Quotes from the Boat. The hazards of being a leader at the Bassmaster Classic, that's exactly what Jason Christie's having to deal with. We knew there would be a lot of spectators on him, but when you're having to go deep into those pockets, things get really skinny in a hurry. I mean, 30, 40 fans to start off the day, you knew it would get into 50 and 60 range, and that's probably what we're dealing with right now. And they're doing nothing but watching. They're trying to be as respectful and as quiet as possible. But they can only get in so far when it will actually affect the fishing. There's you know, certain boat docks that he wants to hit, but if he doesn't hit them on the way in, the crowd moves their way in, and he won't be able to hit them on the way out. So even though they're being respectful, it will affect his fishing today. I'm about on schedule on the number of bites. I just haven't had any any good bites. And it seems like, you know, there's a lot of people out fishing and there's not a lot of stuff to throw at in those pockets. Yes. Awesome. We still got a good bit amount of time. We just gotta, you know, on this lake, I mean, I catch a six and a seven and I feel like I'll be, you know, at least I'll have a chance tomorrow. I just need a couple big bites. People back there are probably saying, does that dude own anything but a spinnerbait? Tomorrow they're gonna bite. You get that feeding day, that wind and clouds. What Jason said right there, the wind, the clouds being great for a spinner bag. Yeah, that's what people are used to hearing, but he's been just as faithful to it in this flat, calm condition, high sun. Hey, figure this one out for me. Fair to say he's married to it. You can see he's very vocal about this. He said, I am fishing one fish spots, and there were big ones live too, and that's been the benefit so far. Christy covering a ton of water. It's been a long way, a long way. Hopefully that at least gets me within five pounds tomorrow. I just want a chance tomorrow, because these son of guns ain't biting. I will tell you that is 100% commitment to a game plan. It's truly remarkable, and Jason Christie doesn't know this, but they're not biting for anyone today in any At significant all. numbers, but boy, he is faithful to that. Will that be what takes him all the way to the end of this Bassmaster Classic? You're watching the 2016 Geico Bassmaster Classic presented by GoPro. Bassmaster Classic, Grand Lake of the Cherokees in Oklahoma. This is a world championship. This is where we identify the best there is in a single tournament. So, of course, you want a good test for these guys. You don't want it to be a total slugfest where it can be random and anyone can win. I mean, you got to identify the best, toughest guy. And it's been a tough test for these guys today, Mark Zona. Exactly right. One of the best, as you said, one of the best grinders on earth is Bill Lowen getting a number of bites through practice. And here's what's different also. You could tell it is warming up. Guys are seeing bass cruising you know we saw that with randy howell you see guys talking about seeing bluegill up on the surface it's a different lake today bill owen's been getting bit catching a lot of short fish right now and he said really any irregularity that's been the key just some sort of an irregularity but he only has four in his boat looking for that limit fish and this bass right ah. here truly this bass earlier today is Woo. what is keeping lowen in the ball game 
Um, it's been a grind. I've had four bites. It's been a pretty slow morning. I mean, it is a grind. We knew it was going to be a grind, but um, I need to get some more bites and I need to get them in the boat um, before this day is over. minute Woo! Mm. yes <laughs> that's number five ah oh. yes sir that's what I'm talking about yeah he was stuck behind a rock I didn't think I was gonna get him out How awesome is that? Thank you, Lord. Woo! I've been toting four fish around all day and made a call to run up here and fish a little brush pile deal and caught me a three, three and a half pounder um, to give me a, a five fish limit. Um, five fish limit's huge, you know. It did, I'm not, I don't think I got a, a lot of weight. I got 12 or 13 pounds probably and uh, tickled to death to have it. I mean, today has been a grind. I have fought for every bite that I got. Um, so yeah, to say I'm happy I got a limit, I'm, I'm ecstatic, man. I'm shaking so hard right now that I can't even rig my bait. Um, I feel like my heart's gonna jump out of my chest. Just like the last time we were here in 2013, day number two, brutal, brutal day of fishing. That was an enormous move right there for Bill Lowen. We're gonna move over to Randy Howell right now. He's kind of cast his fortunes there in the Elk River, fishing that mixture of the dirty water and the clean water. In that, he couldn't really find the fish big enough to make what you call a winning sack. But when he moves into that clearer water, it becomes very apparent to Randy Howell, at least, that the big ones are there. Maybe the big ones big enough to win. I need to make the fish bite for me. Yeah, it's amazing how clear this is and how dirty it is right down there. Yeah, I'm just exploring. I'm about to head back the other way. It's a little too clear. There's one right there. Look at that bass right there. That's a bass. Yeah, it's a pretty good doggone four pound bass. See him? Look, shoom, he just took off. Gosh, now there's another one right there. That's a big one right there. Dang gum. That's getting my, this is messing with my head here. I love the sight fish so much. Mm. That was two over four pounds right there. You know, the great thing about being out there covering Randy Howell is you kind of get to walk around inside his head. He doesn't hold anything back. Everything he's thinking, he he verbalizes for us. And, and for instance, right here on the Elk River, he's he's looking at the water. Oh, it's kind of, it's gotten too clear. But look, there's fish. I, I, how can I reconcile this? How can I work all this out? But uh, that's the place he's trying to figure out for us. As we go to our Shell Rotella Bassmaster Garage, Mark Zona, talk about why he's there in the first place. It really looks like he is on another lake right there. Yeah. As clear as that water is, and really let's dive in and take a look at what makes that spot different from the rest. Really, as you go up the Elk River, the further you go up there, it turns into a massive, massive three foot flat. But the key on this flat in the river, there's little cuts, there's little depressions that sag down into five feet of water and there's massive, massive lay downs in there. And that's where you're seeing a lot of these fish, right where it turns into that depression the other side of it is, it's warmer up there, it's clean water, the problem is there is no wind. With that being said, the last time we were here in 2013, this is interesting, there was a few anglers that thought they could blow that classic away right where Randy Howell is. Well, from Randy Howell in the Elk River where it pours out of the Ozarks with that clear water, we move up to the other major river here, the Neosho River. That's where Greg Hackney has spent all his time so far in this tournament. Today, not as strong as yesterday. Right now he's sitting on four fish, needs one more for his limit. 
this was, I, I hate to say this, but I, I had thought this, that if I didn't catch them today, I might as well not go out tomorrow. That's how important I think it is. Like, I feel like if I, and not necessarily, I, I, worst case scenario, you, you hope in 15th, you know, the first day of the Classic, because you may not can win it on the first day, but I have lost it multiple times after the first day. And I know from experience how to get yourself out of contention in the Classic. I've done it as about as many times as anybody. Um, and so uh, I hate to say it, but I was like, if you don't catch them on the first day at the Classic, you might as well just go to the show and hang out the next two days. Even if you have a good second day and you make the top 25 cut, everybody's here is free from the same thing. I mean, it's all here about winning the Classic. Oh, that sucker ain't hooked very good. Golly, you fish. That water's warming up. They're getting a lot. Like it's funny, when it was cold in practice, they wouldn't even jump. Now they're trying to. Now they try to jump. <laughs> I mean, that's the reason we came back up here. I couldn't take a chance. You know, and then, you know, you know what I'm thinking in my mind. Why did you leave? I should have just fished my way up and then come turn around and came back. Well, it has been a grind, and we keep saying that word, but that's been the case for Greg Hackney all day as well, finally. He's got a limit in the boat. Alton Jones certainly had an easy time of it on day number one, but today, a grind as well. No doubt about it. I guess that word is the theme of the day, and really, the other side of it, what Alton's been concentrating on is a lot of the dredges around the boat docks. That the fish are able to sag in those dredges overnight, and not only that, it, it, it's an area that they should reload into this time of year and Alton Jones knows he just needs a shot going into the final day. You know day two you just hope that by the end of the day you hope that you're going to be in contention to win a title should something outstanding happen to you on, on championship day you know I look back at Randy Howell's win you know he came from 10th or 11th place on going into the final day and he would, and found him a school of fish that uh, nobody had been fishing all week and absolutely warm out so so there's hope for all of us. Little one, little one. I don't think he's keeper. Pretty sure he's not 14. If he is, he's a little barely, but I think he's 13 and three quarters, is what I think. Guess what? I got keeper number four right there at a pound and a half. Elton Jones really just trying to keep the wheels tight right now on the rig. When you see him throw a, a shaky head worm, Things, well, Tommy, they're shaky. They're shaky, and, and even fooling with a fish that size this late in the day. You know, we can't show you every minute of fishing, but what we're not seeing here is the literally hours these guys are going between fish. Hours. Hours. There are just not a lot of bites on the lake this day. Grand Lake is just going through some changes right now. A lot of stress in the most important tournament of the year. Well, winning the Classic is... Uh... You know, that's epic. That's just anything, anybody that ever picked up a rod and reel, paid their their dues into a bass club or any type of bass tournament whatsoever at any level, they know what the Bassmaster Classic is. 20 pounds, 14 ounces! You know, it's the Bassmaster Classic, I and mean, we're all laying it on the line out there and, you know, putting, every, putting our heart and soul in it. I'm probably not much different than a lot of these guys in that, um, I put my heart and soul into it, you know what I mean? Um, it's not easy to get a bite out there, um, and typically when you get a bite, it's a decent bite. Um, so I'm just going to fish for them big bites, I'm going to fish to win. But if you tell them you won the Bassmaster Classic, you just did something. You're watching the 2016 Geico Bassmaster Classic presented by GoPro. This is it, day number two on the Grand Lake of the Cherokees in this classic action. They call it moving day for a number of reasons. you got to move into the top 25, but also day two is known for people moving up and people moving down. Let's take a look at some of the guys moving up. We just saw Edwin Evers there. 
getting his limit. He's looking in a lot better shape than he was. Todd Faircloth also working the Elk River in a different sort of situation than Randy Al. And Alton Jones, not doing as well as he did on day number one, but doing just enough to keep himself within striking distance. Like he said just a few moments ago, still got a chance. Something good can happen. And back to Jason Christie. Here's what Christie's really been concentrating on late in the day. He said, you know, a lot of these fish were on little feeding shelves in the mouth of these pockets but later in the day they would move to the backs of these pockets and not get on a lot really concentrated right, on done. isolated cover one fish right. cover with one bait one ounce booyah spinner bait and really the mud the mud has been his best friend that's just not a bait that you're going to pick up and start slinging on a clear body of water this time of year and the other side of that bait very high risk high reward you're not going to get 30 or 40 bites a day. But generally, if you get five bites on a spinner bait that size with a blade that size, they're going to weigh good. All right, once again, the drought broken. Another one of these guys going long periods without catching one. Hey, he's done his job. The only scary thing with Christy right now you're not seeing those giants that he talked about from practice. Very fragile right now. Long day. I mean, I just, I mean, I'm, I know the weather, the weather wasn't right for what I'm doing, but man, I just don't, have, I don't know another way to catch them other than cover water. And, and uh, these guys might prove me wrong, and they probably will. I just, I think it was a tough day. I just didn't get no big bites. You know, yesterday it was a lot like today, but I started off with two big ones. Uh, and I don't know, it's, I just hope I got a chance tomorrow. You know, I hope I'm, hope I'm within, you know, four or five pounds at least, and maybe I can catch a big bag tomorrow. Go from Christie to another guy who's lived and died by the spinner bait today, Randy Howell in the flat area on the Elk River, but he winds it in with very little time left and makes a move here. Exactly, and really the lack of wind has punished that area in the Elk River. He, he definitely saw what he needed to bring to the way, and Randy Howell's just looking for a spot in the Elk River right now that doesn't have a boat on it. On a three-pounder on a jerk bait on this little stretch yesterday. Somebody was on this this morning. There he is, big gun. Big gun. Nice one. Come on, Lord. Come on. Oh, that is a pulling rascal right there. Come on. Come on, Lord. Come on, Jesus. Get this fish in. Oh, he just got one hook in the head. Come on, Lord. Come on. Oh, that one come out. Come on. Come on. Come on, Jesus. Come on. Come on. Come on. Stay in his head. Stay in his head. Come on. Give up. Give up in Jesus' name. Give up. That one hook come out of his mouth, and the other one still got him right on the top. Come on. He's not that big, but he's he's a good one. Come on. Yes. Woo! Thank you, Lord. Woo! There we go. Livingston jerk bag. Got him, baby. Oh, that's my limit. That's a four. Just about a four pounder. Whew. Fired up now. I told you I'll catch them at the last minute all the time. Whew. I prayed that one to the boat, didn't I? <laughs> Jesus, I, you know, my faith is huge, you know, and, and I just try to, you know, model what he did and what his life was like uh, on earth back in the Bible days, and that's what I really do. And it sounds cliche or it sounds, you know, hokey sometimes to people but that's my life you know that's my passion and that's what i'm here for and uh and to reflect his image on me is what it is what i'm trying to do <whistles> funny uh, second uh third day of the classic three years ago i caught a five pounder right here off this same spot that's a good bank 
Turned out to be a good call, maybe even a genius call by Randy Howell right there. Right now, Robbie Floyd's standing by with another story of a good call that could be big in the grand scheme of things. This is the call of the tournament. Edwin Evers running up the Neosho River at 10 in the morning with zero fish, catching a solid limit. Well, but now here's the problem. He's got to get back on time, and that's going to be the Geico quotes from the boat. You want to talk about local knowledge? If Edwin Evers wins this Bassmaster Classic, this guy deserves it. He is on plane, ran all the way to the north end. We are almost in Missouri. He ran so far up north the Neosho River, and in this one little cut, there's no way I could even get to it. If he wins this Classic, he deserves it. And that was one amazing run. Now if he can get back in time on day two. And guess what else? Edwin Evers also plowed a stump back in there. So he's kind of he's kind of limping back to the BOK Center. Yeah, it's important to get back in time. You don't get back in time, you pay the penalty in terms of pounds. You can even lose your whole catch. But all these guys getting ready to assemble back here in Tulsa. And we'll find out who made the best use of their time on day number two. And the thing about this lake is... It's so big. These pockets and these creeks are so long and it all looks good. You can get caught up by just fish, I mean just taking off and you can waste a lot of time idling in and and uh, you know you just have to stay on the pattern. I mean you gotta run in, fish what you want to fish and get out. You can't get caught up going all the way, all the way around the pocket or you're gonna waste uh, valuable time. The 2016 Bassmaster Classic presented by GoPro is brought to you by Mercury, Minn Kota, Triton, and by Nitro. Whoa! Welcome back. It's our day two coverage of the Geico Bassmaster Classic presented by GoPro. One man's opinion, but the tip of the day might be all about tomorrow. 10 a.m. Eastern Time, two hours of final day coverage coming your way. The things you will see not to be missed at all. Big crowds in Tulsa not have any intention of missing any of this way in on day number two. Huge crowds in place. The pageantry is all set to go. The lights are on. The music is up. Dave Mercer is going to make it official. Seven-time Florida Bassmaster Angler of the Year, four-time Classic Champion, fishing his 25th Bassmaster Classic. Ooh. I've been around a long time, and I've seen, you know, I've had the highest highs, and, and today was a, a low, but uh, it's so cool to be able to get on Bassmaster.com and watch it live, and tomorrow is going to be an incredible day. You know, this is going to be go down in history. As, as one of the most challenging classics, but I think it's also going to go down in history as the biggest ever, and that's because of you, everybody here in Tulsa. Mickey, welcome out to Today, four fish for 11 pounds and 12 ounces with 29 pounds and 9 ounces. Aaron Martins. 16 pounds, 13 ounces. Get loud for the furious hog snatcher. Cheering on this next guy, he is Bill Lowen. 13 pounds, 15 ounces. Lowen lays the lumber on day number two. From Tulano. Seventeen pounds and eight ounces. I can't wait. I can't wait. Look at this crowd. Just my hat's off to every one of you. Thank you so much. Thanks so much. Give it up for Todd Pearclaw. Sixteen pounds, fifteen ounces. A couple of Tulsa toads. You know, it, all you can ask for is to come into the last day with a chance, and I'm going to have a chance. And uh, if the good Lord willing, hopefully it'll be my turn. Here he comes, Jason Christie! Five fish, all alive, 16 pounds, 11 ounces! 
looking to go wire to wire in front of his hometown crowd. You know, things just worked out today. And, you know, to be standing here knowing that if I could go out and put one of those magic grand, just one day, go to Grand Lake and catch one of those bags that I've done in the past and to win, dude, I mean, it, it'd be awesome. Or would Jason Christie even need one of those kind of days to put away this classic, win this thing wire to wire? There he is on top with a significant lead top bear claw. Big day in the Elk River for second place. Edwin Evers not catching four on day one. Obviously didn't sit well with him. A big resurgent. Bill Lowen and that man, Aaron Martins. But Jason Christie, almost six-pound lead. Is that insurmountable? Well, uh, you have the best fisherman on the lake, Jason Christie, with really the best way to put it. He has a six-stroke lead going <laughs> into the goodness. final round of this event. And really, for anybody else in the field right now, it's desperation because... Christie's one of the best closers on earth. Mm -hmm. If anybody's going to catch him, they're going to have to bring something that has not been seen, not even close so far in this Geico Bassmaster Classic. Will they be able to do it? We'll find out when we see you next time.